The Karman line, also known as the von Karman line, is a theoretical boundary that separates the Earth's atmosphere from outer space. It is named after Theodore von Karman, a Hungarian-American mathematician, and aerospace engineer who was the first to suggest its existence in 1951. The Karman line has been a topic of much debate and discussion among scientists, engineers, and space enthusiasts for many years. Welcome back to my channel. The Edge of Earth, Scientific and Technical Aspects of the Karman Line In this episode, we will explore the Karman Line in detail, discussing its history, the scientific and technical aspects of the boundary, and its significance for human exploration and spaceflight. We will discuss a little bit of a conspiracy theory as well, involving the American government and the first American into space, Alan Shepard, who flew his NASA spacecraft in 1961. The concept of the Karman line dates back to the early 20th century, when scientists and engineers began exploring the possibility of human flight and space travel. It was during this time, that the first attempts were made to build rocket-powered aircraft, and send them into space. However, scientists and engineers quickly realized that there were significant technical challenges to overcome, if humans were to venture beyond the Earth's atmosphere. One of the biggest challenges was to determine where the Earth's atmosphere ended, and outer space began. In the early days of space exploration, this boundary was referred to as the edge of space. However, as scientists and engineers began to study the problem in more detail, it became clear that there was no clear boundary between the Earth's atmosphere and outer space. Instead, there was a gradual transition between the two. It was in 1951 that Theodore von Karman, a renowned mathematician and aerospace engineer, proposed the idea of a boundary between the Earth's atmosphere and outer space. Von Karman suggested that this boundary should be defined as the point at which the Earth's atmosphere becomes too thin to support aerodynamic flight. He calculated this boundary to be approximately 100 kilometers, 62 miles, above the Earth's surface. Since then, it has become widely accepted as the boundary between the Earth's atmosphere and outer space. However, there is still some debate among scientists and engineers about the exact height of the Karman line and whether it is a suitable definition for the boundary between the Earth's atmosphere and outer space. At this altitude, the air is so thin that there is not enough lift to keep an aircraft or spacecraft aloft, using conventional aerodynamic principles, a region where only rockets can fly. Any aircraft would not have the air for engine combustion, which is calculated based on the properties of the Earth's atmosphere including its density and pressure. At sea level, the Earth's atmosphere has a density of approximately 1.2 kg per cubic meter, and a pressure of approximately 101.3 kPa. As altitude increases, the density and pressure of the atmosphere decrease. At the height of the Karman line, the density of the atmosphere is approximately 10 to the power of minus 9 kg per cubic meter, which is about 1 100,000th the density of the air at sea level. This means that any object that crosses the Karman line is considered to have entered outer space, and any vehicles that are designed to operate in outer space, must be able to withstand a harsh environment, including extreme temperatures, radiation, and the lack of atmospheric pressure. Humans cannot survive without a pressurized spacecraft or spacesuit. A pressurized environment for the crew is compulsory, protection against the effects of radiation, since operate in a vacuum environment. This requires the use of advanced materials and technologies, including lightweight composites, advanced life support systems, and high-performance engines. Even today, there is some debate among scientists and engineers about the exact height of the Karman line. While von Karman initially calculated the height of the Karman line to be approximately 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface, there is some evidence to suggest that the boundary may be slightly higher or lower than this. In 2013, the United States Federal Aviation Administration FAA, officially recognized the Karman line as being 50 miles 80 kilometers, above the Earth's surface. However, other organizations and countries use different definitions, and the debate continues to this day. One of the challenges in defining the Karman line is that the Earth's atmosphere is not uniform. 
The density and pressure of the atmosphere vary depending on a number of factors, including altitude, temperature, and weather conditions. This means that there is no clear-cut boundary between the Earth's atmosphere and outer space. Instead, the transition between the two is gradual and can occur over a range of altitudes. For this reason, if we accept that beyond 100 kilometers from Earth's surface, space began, and even if the air is about 1 100,000th the density of the air at sea level, one may think that the International Space Station, which is at 408 kilometers or 250 miles above Earth, is flying in a vacuum, but even at this altitude, there are air molecules that hit the station, slowing it down and making it fall from orbit. That's why the ISS needs to use boosters every now and then, to re-establish orbit. Despite these challenges, the Kármán line remains an important concept in the field of spaceflight and exploration. It serves as a benchmark for human explorations, and has been used to define the altitude at which astronauts receive their wings. It also represents a milestone in the history of space conquests, as it marks the point at which humans first ventured beyond the Earth's atmosphere. In this case, I beg the question, where does the Earth's atmosphere end? Because sure it doesn't end at the Kármán line. In recent years, there has been renewed interest in human spaceflight and exploration, driven by the efforts of private companies such as SpaceX and Blue Origin, as well as government agencies such as NASA and the European Space Agency. These organizations are working to develop new spacecraft and technologies that will enable humans to travel further into space and explore new frontiers. A conspiracy theory that some say it is true, is about the first American into space, Alan Shepard, who in 1961 made his suborbital flight. At the height of the Cold War, and in the full race to conquer space against the USSR, any less than a success, was considered unacceptable, not just for the Americans, but for all free world. Yuri Gagarin, a Soviet cosmonaut, was the first man in space, in 1961, a huge propaganda boost for the Soviets, and a scientific achievement for humanity nonetheless. Now the ball was in the American yard, and NASA chose the astronaut Alan Shepard to be the first American in space. Where the conspiracy reside, I will tell you right away, just bear with me. In 1959, Alan Shepard was designated as one of the original NASA Mercury 7 astronauts, and in May 1961, he piloted the Freedom 7 spacecraft on the first crewed Project Mercury flight, callsign Mercury Redstone 3. His spacecraft penetrated space, but was unable to achieve orbit, but this matter less, like I have said already, any less than a success, would have been a disaster for the Westerners. He was the second individual to travel into space, the first American, and the first to manually control the orientation of his spacecraft. Shepard was scheduled to pilot the three-day mission Mercury Atlas 10, or in short, MA-10 mission during the final phases of Project Mercury. In honor of his first spacecraft, he named Mercury Spacecraft 15B Freedom 72, but the mission was cancelled. However, the first American in space, Alan Shepard, reached suborbital speed, in other words, he wasn't able to go beyond the 100 kilometers or 62 miles also known as Kármán Line. So if you ask why the Americans define Kármán Line as 50 miles, or around 80 kilometers above Earth, is for this reason, accepting the European definition of 100 kilometers or 62 miles, it means that Alan Shepard was not the first American into space, he flew under the Kármán Line. Kármán line will serve as a reference point for the development of new spacecraft and technologies, and will be a key milestone for future missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. The Kármán line represents a symbol of human ingenuity, curiosity, and exploration, and will continue to inspire generations to come. Thanks for watching.